people right now. Streaming live. Okay, I think I got everything, Mark. I feel like this feels like it's been like three weeks, four weeks since I've done this. I don't know. Four six five. Six five. And that looks good. That looks good. Okay, we're gonna transition. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Android App Addicts, episode 465, recorded April 20th, 2017. That's right, folks. If your taxes aren't done yet, you're in big trouble. My name is Mark, sometimes known as the Sultan of the Soapbox Cockerel, and joining me this week is the grand exalted one, the one you all love and know and 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 stuff, uh, the door to door geek, Mr. Steve McLaughlin. Hey, Dor, how are you doing? Hey, Mark. It's really good to hear you. Of course, I uh, always and always will subscribe to geek ramp, but it's good to actually hear you and you hear me talking back. So it's not yes. like, you know, completely insane. Yeah. Last week, um, I apologize for my absence. Uh, life got in the way. Um, I was, uh, busy at church, uh, Easter week, you know, is a, is a big thing. And a thing that was only supposed to go an hour went two and a half hours and I didn't make it back and I couldn't even, tell door that i wasn't going to make it back because my phone battery died and uh I, it's just uh that's a nightmare for a geek like me when your phone battery dies you have lost your contact with the world that, i mean i have surrendered my higher brain functions to google i don't i don't have the ability to think on my own anymore i don't know any phone numbers i don't know any addresses i i, I didn't i didn't know how to get home I, I wasn't sure who my wife was it was a terrible frightening moment yeah i'm pretty sure i would have turned into that guy at the gas station walking up to people, excuse me, uh, I, I was on my way home to see my kids and uh, my battery died. Um, do you know where you, I live? Can you help me get closer to my home? And then when they ask where do you live, um, I don't know. Things don't look familiar, so I'm going to guess it's not here. <laughs> Is this my house? Are you my wife? Yeah, uh, yeah something like that. Um. I will say I have no immediate hardware news, but I have, there's something that I just have to mention right away. Um, well, first off, we have a new Patreon subscriber, Ian. Uh, thank you very much, Ian. Um, I don't know what name to call him by because I actually know him by multiple names. Very cool guy, goes to security cons, really smart guy. Uh, thank you uh, for the support. You are the man. Awesome. Um, and uh, HP, HP is one of those companies. Last week we talked about Dex, Samsung Dex, Samsung putting out this piece of hardware that makes your Android smartphone, your Samsung Galaxy S8, uh, act like a desktop computer. And if there's anybody who can throw money away at these kind of things, and they might actually work. Samsung is one of those companies. Well, HP in the past has put out two or three different laptops that had Android running on them. The utter failures, ridiculous, utter, big, huge, colossal, beefy, hardy, husky failures, if you will. Um, well, they just, there was just a leak. Uh, Bill Miller on Google Plus, uh, the guy who I personally credit with making sure I miss nothing that ever happens on any website ever known to mankind kind of thing. Uh, posted thing in Google Plus where HP had an accidental slip a leak of Remix OS 7.1 running on an HP Android laptop. Um, I truly believe Remix right now is the only company, only company even remotely close to doing desktop, laptop, Android right um period nobody's getting close it, it, google isn't getting close not even remotely close period you know i don't and, think google's heart is in it they've uh they've made some v vague hand wavy gestures about it but honestly um uh, the the android on the chromebook d doesn't seem to have their their whole heart 
Well, and somebody tried to say, um, you know, these big companies follow trends or, you know, they follow, no, 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 no. Google doesn't follow crap. Google leads. And it's obvious they don't want this to be a real thing. That's my logic. That's why they're only putting like a little bit of effort into it. They're not really going full high on the hog, which I will say I love that term, high on the hog, especially now that I understand the true definition of it. But HP is another one of those companies who can afford to lose millions of dollars in this endeavor. But at the same token, because they're bringing in Remix OS, to me, they extremely heighten the possibility of striking that nugget and hitting it rich, that gold nugget, not a bad nugget, but hitting a gold nugget and literally doing it right. Um, Remix by far best one HP, honestly, HP can do great hardware. They've done some horrible laptop hardware in the past, but I actually, it's one of those things I'm bullish on them until I get it in my hands. And if they prove me wrong, they do. But this is a device that if it comes true to fruition and, and not just some leak from some resource inside their thing, I am going to look at it very interestingly. Um, especially yeah, I, if it has a good battery. I don't get it. I've said this before. I'm not going to belabor the point, but I don't get it. It's a it's an OS designed for touch, for relatively small interfaces, for large uh, uh, interface points. Um, though none of those translate well to laptop slash desktop experience. I, 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 everybody keeps trying to do this. The, the one uh, experience to rule them all. They want to, you know, the, the tablet OS to be your desktop OS. I, I coined the phrase five years ago, the tabletification of the OS. Everybody's trying to do that. I just don't get it. I don't see the point in it, which means it's going to be a huge success because I don't get it. That proves that it's a real thing. Uh, but I just don't understand why, I mean, I get from a developer perspective, one OS, one thing to write, but I just don't understand why they're trying to shove this down the consumer's neck. Um, we have mobile OSs, we have desktop OSs, each of them does their job well. I don't know why we need to, to put a mobile OS on a desktop. You say they do it well. I heavily contradict and say they suck horribly and are ridiculously infectable and are very fragile kind well, of thing. I mean, none of, none of that goes away just because you stick Android on a laptop. Um, I will extremely beg to differ. Um, I still have not seen any actual authentic, uh, actual proof authenticating any Android device in the history of Android in the continental United States ever actually having a real virus on it. Uh, there is unwanted where there's ad where there's pop-up kind of where there's Chrome extensions, or not Chrome extensions, uh, Chrome things that can get in there and cause bad things, but I've still never seen an actual security infection. Uh, so it, it's unbelievably safer in the history, just comparing history versus Windows or Mac. Mac is technically now very infectable. I know text it's cleaned up a lot, but to quote the HUD, the HUD, the HUD sucker proxy, you know, it's for kids. It's for the kids. Yeah. There is no explaining it because they, I, I, I am with you on the fact that why sometimes people need to stop and ask themselves, should we do it? Not, can we do it? Right. But I'm a fan of leeching ridiculously, barbarically, inhumanly leeching off of the Android application ecosystem. And I do think there's a good amount of applications that work on a multi-windowed bigger screen fairly well. Um, I like all my Remix Ultra tablet, you know, 12 plus hours battery life. And I can have four things up on the screen at one time. When I'm at work, I typically have my email up, IRC up, my Mattermost server up, and uh, um, a Discord chat up all at the same time so i can see all my conversations right there in real time right in front of me on the normal android interface you can only see one thing at a time kind of two but sometimes the second window doesn't actually live update till you tap it uh so then you just have to rely on notifications to pull you into apps where i like the idea of multi-windowed apps now the devil's advocate is just get a laptop well realistically you could get much less hardware and get much the same battery life and experience 
So it should be one of those things that costs a lot less than, than your normal $600 laptop. But, you know, that's wishful thinking. It should be. Should you remember, be. you will remember this, the, the, the gray beard that you are. The Motorola Atrix circa 2008, 2009, where they had this idea of docking your phone to a monitor and keyboard and having this one device that did everything. You remember that? Oh, yeah. And it was one of those things on paper, I think, made eloquent sense and when it was deployed was crap utter failure yeah i just i i i was burned by that you know i was a believer in tablet devices um long before anybody else uh you know i, I had a one of those transforming windows tablets where the the hinge was in the middle and flips around you know i was uh bill gates and me we were we were tight like that we were the two people in the world that believed in tablet computing um but even then it was trying to take the desktop experience and make it touchable. Um, and then, you know, I, as much as I don't like to give props to Apple for anything, they took, they made a touchable OS. They were the first to really do it right. Um, and everybody's been trying to take, you know, to, to bring those two together ever since 2007, since uh, the iPhone came out. And I just, you know, I don't, I don't want peanut butter in my chocolate. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. What I will say is tablets are failing. Tablets are failing miserably and quickly. Tablet sales are plummeting faster than United Airlines, you know, ticket sales kind of thing. Nobody is buying tablets. And when they are, they insist on utter ridiculously cheap kind of thing. Um, even iPad sales are down. And and, and that is snarky because, you know, it's Apple, but. Even iPad sales are down, which means when people buy a tablet, they realize they don't need another tablet. Right. So, so all these hardware manufacturers are really doing nothing more than trying to reach and push hardware into new niches that don't even exist and then insisting that we need it. I'm this sucker who stops and think, you know, uh, they might be onto something. All right. Well, I mean, we've, we've had this discussion. We will have this discussion again, uh, but the show is not called Android discussion. It's called Android app addict. So, um, what, what's your first app of the evening, my friend? Uh, first app I wanted to bring, I honestly try to find apps at least once in a while that I think you, you could be at least interested in. And part of me thought this might feel that need. And part of me thought you're going to look at this and say, this is the stupidest thing you brought to the show ever. Um, but it's a Wikipedia game called Wiki Game, the Wikipedia game, conveniently enough. Uh, uh, the point is, it gives you like a Kevin Bacon six degrees of separation kind of thing. You have to start on the one things page and then through clicks, figure out what's the correct path, what's the quickest path to get to that other, to get to that other thing. So, so Thing? Did you post yeah. the link and I didn't see it? Um, I did in the uh, um, the i the IRC chat. Yeah, I don't. I'm not seeing that. Okay. Um, I see SCJ six four three and Highlander posting stuff in the chat. I see your name there. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm easily confused. Continue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wiki game, a Wikipedia game by Yav. Franco, educational, E for everyone, technically educational, technically educational, um, contains ads, completely free, 81 reviews, 4.8 average reviews, um, updated April 18th, 2017 version 064, which means this thing is still pretty, pretty fresh between 100 and 500 installs. I honestly like the idea of this. Uh, because I was listening to people today talking about how they showed their kids the new quote unquote Google earth falling over how fantastic the new Google earth is. And I do like the idea of giving my kids things secretly, meaning to educate them at least a little bit, you know, just, just browsing Google earth, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff and learn a bunch of stuff. This game, I'm not going to say is going to do the same, but you might learn of the connection between Karl Marx and mashed potatoes or, you know, something like that. Um, so I just thought it was in, in, interesting. 
I'm I'm in. That, that sounds exciting to me. It look it looks like maybe. I mean, uh, does it look like something that could be played with a group? You can see people challenging other people. Yes. Uh, if you take a look, uh, I don't. Yeah. I I did play. I don't remember being able to select a group, but you do see uh, uh, other people in your same r- rounds of play. So you really are trying to compete with other people to see if you can figure out the correct path first. And just to be clear, this is wiki game, not to be confused with the wiki game, which is a different game entirely. Oh, crap. That might be a better game. I didn't. <laughs> um, I did want to say uh, last week, the uh, uh, a gold, uh, Rube Goldberg's lab or something, whatever that was. Yeah. Um, I downloaded that like while listening to the show because I was like, that that sounds perfect for me. I played through a couple of levels and the first time it said, oh, you don't have any hearts. You can't continue. Would you like to buy them? I uninstalled. So it was a a good game killed by the hurry up and wait, uh, you know, pay to play thing. And Uh, that's, and that's a shame. Yes. That really is. Cause you think they would be smart enough to say, well, this first time around, let's like give them crazy amounts of time and whatever, uh, a ability to play. And only after we really do believe we actually have them hooked. And we'll, you know, cinch the knot and tighten the noose. You know, I, just let me pay $5 or $3 or whatever for the game one time and be done with it. But this stuff, buying emeralds and jewels or whatever, it just, I mean, I get that it's highly uh, effective. People spend thousands of dollars on it. I get that it works, and I understand why developers want to do it. But I, I will never, have never, and and just can't imagine ever buying rubies so that i can speed up the building of a castle or something that's just no yeah and the key thing was just because it's effective doesn't mean it's that and yeah i've been pulling this out so many times at work mark to the point where now people just hate hate me even more being in meetings like they would say well this is effective so we should do it and i would say well so we're nazis that doesn't mean they should continue on and it just stops everyone right in their tracks kind of thing um yes just because something is effective doesn't mean it's cool okay acceptable thing to keep moving forward with i despise honestly i'm with you the first it is such a bitter bitter taste in my mouth when that happens it up gone no if no ands no buts no could be's no should be's no maybes gone instantaneously and it's because we have billions seemingly of applications to pick from we can be picky all right and what's the next application that allows us to be picky Okay. Um, I finally got completely sick and tired of my longtime keyboard. Now I'll say this. I am getting in that old man acceptance settling level of being in my Android verse with like my launcher and, you know, things like that. And I was really stuck on my touch pal keyboard. And every now and then I would get a, an ad and I would just go clear defaults, uh, clear the data, reset all the settings and say, okay, don't know, don't show me ads. And then it would, for a couple of weeks, it seems like maybe a month or two, it would obey that. And then I would get an update and then it would stop working. So I said, I'm going to try a different keyboard. This did come as a suggestion from Google plus I'm not remember who it was, but it's called multi ling O keyboard plus emoji. Okay. The big kicker of this keyboard is it's supposed to be multilingual. Um, I will say the number one tip I give anyone for this keyboard is as soon as you install it, as soon as you get it up and running, the very first thing you have to do is on the upper left-hand side, there is a uh, magnifying glass like tap, hold, and drag it and make the keyboard a different size. When I left it at the default size, I was getting to me some very inaccurate and very weird behavior every now and then, just enough to make me go flip out crazy. And as soon as I adjusted the keyboard side, it seemed like it recalibrated stuff. And then it started working immensely better. Um, I can tell you in areas where this keyboard fails and excels, where it fails is it doesn't look at your history before you install the keyboard. It doesn't look at your Twitter, your Facebook, or anything else to get your writing habits and your most used words, which means from the very first time you start typing this thing, it might suggest words that are completely utterly wrong. 
So what you have to do is you have to take the time to, uh, uh, you know, uh, train it, which means when it, it suggests a wrong word, you tap and hold that I incorrect word in the, in the top bar and you hit, uh, and you, uh, select, I want to say re, um, deuce priority. I want to say is, is what it was. And then when you hand type something like pod nuts, you tap and hold it and say, increase priority kind of thing. So you have to train it a little bit. And once you do that, it becomes a much more usable keyboard. Um, the level of customization on this keyboard is literally silly. Okay. Silly, crazy high. You can make this thing look like nearly any style you want. Rounded corners, squircle corners, square corners, um, three dimensional, like drops in it, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, I do like how and one of the things i like is how you can easily get to the uh microphone uh speech input you literally just hold down the gear slide just a touch to the right bang voice dictation is up and running uh there is advanced controls like move the cursor one at a time uh select one at a time in-depth copy and paste routines just a touch under the layer you gotta basically search for kind of thing and if you're into emojis the search engine works exactly as you expect you type clap hit emoji you get the hand clapping gif kind of thing that kind of thing um so right now this is my go-to um the other thing sorry that the, the other thing that i heard that people really liked about it was the um one-handed mode and the split keyboard mode the more advanced things you could do which i'm not even touching because i don't need to touch that so can you set it to automatically split when you go horizontal or something like that? I do believe it was a lot of actually settings you could do separately between a uh, uh, landscape and portrait mode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Including key spacing, key size, key colors. I believe you could even change the background foreground colors for all that as well. Um, you could also change it from QWERTY to other keyboards, which to me that right there shows customization uh, is a priority. So yeah, I'll say this, it's probably not the best keyboard that's ever made. It's probably going to take you days to get it trained to where it's acceptable, but I can promise you if you stick through it, it actually works. One of the thing I found almost fascinating looking at the video, almost all of the configuration is served up in your web browser. So when you hit the customization, you literally get launched to a web page where you can pick your themes and some of the advanced settings and save it back to the keyboard. Um, so that gives them the availability to customize all this stuff on the fly without having to send you updates. I thought that was cool. The demo video is seven and a half minutes long. I mean, that, that speaks to the depth of this particular keyboard. Yeah. Or seven, right at seven minutes, not seven and a half, but that's, I'm still a swipe guy, but uh, lately swipe um, has been letting me down. Uh, it, it, it expects me to actually speak English and you know, that that's just wrong. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I jokingly quote, uh, uh, I, I jokingly say that autocorrect hates me, but really it's just that I'm not even giving it enough letters to make words out of. I've gotten so lazy with swiping that I just kind of move things. You know, you were talking about the uh, uh, adaptive learning your words thing. For the longest time, anytime I typed U, Y-O-U, three characters across the top of the screen, um, I, the word I would get is tit. And <laughs> every time. And finally, wow. I, I had to just delete that word from the library because that made for some interesting work emails uh, if I wasn't yeah. super vigilant about correcting it. And then it came back. It's like, it's not like I type that word on a regular basis. It wasn't learning from me. I don't know. I don't get it, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, adaptive keyboards can be rough. I, I think uh, swipe actually pulls from like the zeitgeist because things that are popular on Twitter or whatever, right. uh, uh, you'll start to see those words appear as suggestions. And uh, apparently nerds use that word a lot. Who knew? Well, and to be honest, I almost like them. I almost like keyboards that do that. Um, but at the same token, yeah, you, with this keyboard, I learned, I have to, when, for the first, whatever time period, I have to stop and proofread everything like obsessively. Um, 
And I will say in the last couple of weeks in my, on my phone, I did get, I want to say now it was uh, three weeks ago. I got a, uh, a Android Nougat 7 dot whatever update. I want to say my voice dictation now has also gotten a little flaky. I don't know if it's, it shouldn't be the hardware because it was fine before. It might be their uh, Huawei stuff going on, or it might be the Google stuff going on. I don't know because the dirty secret is in any keyboard when you hit voice dictation, it's actually pulling up the Android voice typing, quote unquote, keyboard. Um, but everything else about this keyboard seems to be working fine. I'm not going to say fantastic, crazy, outstanding, perfect, great, but it's definitely re, re, um, re, uh, re, uh, place the touchpad keyboard for me with no problem completely and just to i apologize for the pg-13 moment there if your kids were listening and they don't know what that word means uh i apologize for spoiling their innocence um, Short for titillating yes that's it um the guys did, read all the email last week uh so i don't have anything to read from you but i do have a tweet uh that uh, door sent that uh, I'm guessing he sent it to me because he wanted it read. Uh, it says at door to door geek, know of an Android music player that can be configured to only look in a single folder rather than display full contents of SD. So door, do you have an answer to that question? Well, to me, this was a hard question to answer for me for one primary reason. Me don't listen to any music ever. When I do, it's literally just Google play weird out Yankovic add every one of his albums to the queue and just hit play and let it go. Um, so it was really difficult for me to even find an answer. I found maybe like one or two apps that said it could do it. Uh, VLC was one of them. None of them looked elegant. I'll say that none of them looked elegant whatsoever. So I want to ask the listeners, if you have an application you like to play your music with, where you can point it at one folder and just have that one folder and not have it scan your entire SD card or whatever. Uh, please send us an email at aaaaponus.com or Twitter us or whoever you are most comfortable contacting us. Um, the option I gave him is the typical door to door geek response, which is every modern podcast player, every full featured, every aged podcast player has the ability to do a thing called virtual feeds. And what virtual feeds are is you go on your SD card, you go in your storage. You create a folder, you put your audio files in there, you go into your podcast player, you say new virtual feed, not new RSS feed, new virtual feed, point it to the folder, and it will treat all the contents in that folder as if it is an RSS feed, and those are all the files coming into it. So you can put all your shows in there, and you can say, this is like a one-time playlist, when every time it finishes a song, delete the song, or never delete the songs because every podcast player that's advanced also lets you change settings per feed. So you can make it say, never delete, always delete, never speed up where all my other content I want to speed up kind of thing. So that would have been my selection because I'm already in that interface for audio needs. But if you, the listener have a better response, I would love to, I would love it if we could help a fellow pod not seeing out. I just did a quick test while you were talking there. So, uh, my, uh, sample size is small, but I, I believe that the built-in media player in my file explorer of choice, Solid Explorer, will actually do that. You point it at a folder on the SD card and tell it to play, and it'll play what's in that folder. Um, so that's not a media player, you know, per se, but it's the media playing function of a file explorer. You might want to check that out. Whatever file explorer you're already using may have that feature and you just didn't know it. Well, and I'll say this, I love the idea of multitasking. If we can use something that we already use for something else, we can just task even better, which is, you know, I think the real reason why I first leaned toward uh, using a podcasting type solution. Right. Because you already have one. And if you're listening to the show, you probably already have one. Yes, but I'm also sure there's a certain segment of the population who literally uh, goes to the web page and hits play. Yes, that is a thing. Speaking of web pages, while you uh, do notes and stuff, I'm going to vamp. Uh, I, I bemoaned it uh, on on my uh, uh, Geek Rant podcast this week, but my uh, host, uh, 
that hosts all my websites, including elementopi.com, um, Host Monster, which is also Bluehost, and I think Host Gator, I think they're all the same company with different face plates, did a quote scheduled maintenance late Saturday night that broke all of my websites. Mm. I, I, I have uh, eight, nine domains that are active. I own way too, I have a domain problem. Uh, but, uh, I think I have eight, uh, active websites. Some of them are mine, you know, family site, the, uh, uh, the business site, you know, uh, uh, friends, uh, mommy blog, that kind of thing. Um, and they all broke. And I, as I experimented over time, you know, what I figured out was they had, uh, monkeyed with, uh, the PHP. Uh, and of course, most modern websites today run on PHP. And it wasn't actually the PHP itself, but they did a, a, a system-wide rewrite of my HT access files. Uh, you, that's web geek stuff. Not everybody knows what that means. But the the point is that my web hosting company during a, quote, scheduled maintenance period broke 100% of my websites. And when I tried to get some satisfaction out of them about it, Easter Sunday, you know, because uh, I got a, a an email Sunday morning when I was at church from somebody saying, hey, the elementopi.com slash Amazon link isn't working. And I said, well, there's a scheduled uh, maintenance. Maybe they're doing that now. Uh, and the, I'm going to go back to listening to the preacher now. Uh, and so um, when I got home, I realized that they were all down. And so it took me until late Wednesday night to get all that back. Um, and the the first person I talked to, you know, random Indian guy reading a script, um, I said, I just need to know what you did to to break all my sites. Oh, we didn't do anything. Uh, okay. First off, you told me, you sent me an email telling me there was uh, scheduled maintenance. So you should have a log somewhere of the maintenance that you did. Uh, secondly, um, you broke all eight of my sites. I find it hard to believe that eight different domains suddenly all spontaneously broke without any changes being made on the server. And his response was, no, sir, we didn't do anything on the server. Yeah. Right. Can I talk to your boss? Uh, so it was one of those kind of things. Um, eventually the best I could get out of them was we'll restore you from a backup to before the site was broken. Um, and I thought, well, I don't think that's going to work because none of the stuff had changed. We didn't, you know, you're, you're restoring when the server changed. That's like, you know, when there's an earthquake, you move the building somewhere else. Now the ground is still broken. Um, but they did that, didn't do any good. And eventually it was me being the code monkey that I am, being the guy with decades of experience going in and manually retweaking things over and over again. So all of this to say, host monster sucks. Uh, um, but so does everybody else, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's just not any option out there short of, of buying your own server somewhere. Well, and this is why I toyed with the idea, Mark. I toyed with the idea of doing this for years, which is in my network on a box, hosting a LAMP server, a Linux, a, um, a Apache, MySQL, PHP server, using my content management system, whether Drupal, Joomla, WordPress or whatever. And then there's a simple tool you can do that will hit like the public facing side of that internal web server and then spit out static HTML and then just post static HTML up to podnuts.com to the real domain and not run any dynamic web pages whatsoever. Um, I came really close to doing that a couple of times just because of this issue. They can change PHP any files. They can change HT access files. They can change a bunch of things and the whole time just pleading ignorance. Like what? We don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, we didn't do nothing. Yeah. And, uh, I ran years ago, I ran my own web servers in a box. You know, I had, uh, I had my own pa Apache server. It's, it's trivial to do. Um, but you know, now that I've got a podcast with several thousand listeners and I'm pulling down terabytes of, of data a month, that's just not something that Comcast is going to let me do in my living room. Yeah. So I have no choice, but to farm that out somewhere. Um, and yeah, un unless you're willing to spend you know, a thousand plus dollars a year on a virtual server somewhere. Um, you just, th there is no other choice, but these crappy hosting companies. And it's the same thing with like, uh, you know, cable ISPs. They all know that you don't have any choice to go anywhere else. So they're not any, in any way interested in serving your, you, their customer. Right. Well, I'll just tell you right now, Mark, 
be wary about services like Libsyn right. and all those things because it's the kind of thing they'll give you just enough rope to hang yourself because you're paying for this explicit, hard, crazy set out of thin air limits that make no sense and that shouldn't have a limit on them. And they set the limits. And then the split second you overreach those limits, you have no choice but to pay them more money. Right. That's the ransom po policy. Yeah. yeah. So I must, I must say, trust me when I say I understand there's no right answer unless you just post it all to archive.org. Right. Then you have nothing to worry about. Also, people's downloads might take 20 minutes, but they're going to get it. All right. Did I vamp long enough for you to come up with your next app? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me see why that Solid Explorer window go boom. It didn't work. Um, okay. Um, this is one of those really, Mark, this is only going to serve at the most 2% of the listening audience. But I like the idea of the app, and I like the possibility of this app and what it can mean for the future. Okay. I am craving stability in my network from top to bottom, but I also really do like knowing, like you were saying, you were the admin of your own web server. You had that comfortable, warm feeling of you knew inside and out. You could look at it and you would know what this was, what that was, and you had confidence in the box. Well, most of the routers we buy today, we don't really have that confidence because it's running whatever it is and we just, let it go kind of thing and just say, okay, well, it looks like it seems like it's working fine. Um, uh, there's a small breed of us that crave DDWRT or open word or gargoyle or tomato or one of them. Well, here's a DDWRT companion Android app that gives you very high functionality into your router from your phone without having to constantly click and zoom in, zoom out, you know, on your phone mobile phone because i've done plenty of router configuration and management for my phone it is not fun it is not easy it is not quick it is not comfortable it's like trying to manage a windows server from a you know five-year-old phone you're not going to like it you're not going to have fun um uh, yeah so this is called ddwrt companion tasker plugin 99 cents to buy from Armel Soro productivity app, uh, 4.3 average reviews, uh, 9.0.4 is the version. So it's been around a little bit while latest update was March 7th, 2017. Um, so this is a plug into the tasker app. So you have to have the tasker app installed first, which, uh, I believe there's both a free and paid version of tasker. And then this plugs into tasker and, uh, connects to your DDWRT router. So you said 2% of the audience. I'm going to narrow that down to like 0.1% because it doesn't even affect me because I don't have a, I don't have Tasker on my phone. Right. And I will say Tasker is one of those things. There's nothing wrong with it. It's good. It's really good, but it requires a certain uh, tongue to be spoken, if you will. You have to learn, like when you were a kid learning pig Latin, that was easy. Tasker is definitely more complicated than that. But at the same token, the power it unleashes is really high. So you can then intermingle the power of the Tasker, the automation things you can do inside Tasker with your GDWRT, which really can make it so anytime Joe from down the street comes to watch a football game, you can literally hit one button, which can completely change your wireless configuration so he can get in with his password. And then when his device is off your network, you hit another button and completely basically reflash it and put a different, cause you don't want him any remnants of him on your network. Um, you could really do that kind of automation with Tasker. It's kind of nuts. Yeah. It's a great app. I played with it. I just don't have a need for what it does, you know, and it's a, uh, uh, it requires root. Doesn't it to do well? To, I'll say this, to do 100% of the functionality, yes. Without root, you can easily do 80 to 85% of the same things. Uh, there's just going to be a small segment of things that when you try to do, it will basically tell you you need a higher level of access. All right. Uh, I got nothing else to, uh, by the way, Tasker is $3. I just oh, looked that up. 
So a total five, five, four, four dollar investment for everything. Uh, I'll say this: if you crave that level of automation, it's going to be worth money. All right. Okay. Give one second to click on one button. Like five different things. He depends on me to vamp for him during this time, and and I let him down. So no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'll say that's why I like having three of us on the show. Uh, it means I could yeah, technically talk about where Eric is. Eric is traveling for work, and he didn't just ditch us. Oh, oh he, he. The good news is he got reelected, so he has four more years of uh, having a job, which is good. Uh, the bad news is he has four more years of a job mm. that he's not getting paid great money for and requires lots of hours. But, so somebody asked me uh, a question recently. Um, it might be an interesting, I, I think I know your answer, Dor. Uh, but the question is, if somebody gave you your current salary just as a gift, what would you do rather than work? Right, and I think we know the answer for you is podcast. Well, you mean ongoing gave yeah. me the money? Oh, for the rest of my life? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably do like 20 shows a week and have a problem. Uh, I think I think my that might be the same answer for me. I, I would I would definitely be uh, uh, more heavily into podcasting than I get to be right now. But uh, t an exercise to the listener: if you can't answer that question, um, you need to, you need to find an answer to that. And 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 if you can find a way to make that your job, even better. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, what I'm going to bring next, it might sound like a repeat, but it's not actually. I just, I'm just going to stop right here before you even say what it is. The icon on the play store says 20 megs. So they just want to get that out there up front. This is a huge app. Well, I can tell you right now, there's a game on my Android device. That's over a hundred megs easy. So oh, wait, 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 the description again, not telling you what it is yet all in a compact 20 meg version. So this is the small version. At 20 max. Yeah, I, I've had, I know I've had games that are literally almost uh, like two, 300 megs. Right. I just, um, this made me laugh. Go ahead. Well, Nova historically has been heavy. And I say historically because Game Loft literally has, I want to say, eight of these games at least so far. Um, this is their newest one called Nova Legacy by Game Loft. Again, a T for Teen, 184,000 reviews. Uh, average 4.4 reviews. Um, current version 1.1.5 between 5 million and 10 million installs. Uh, does have in-app purchases. Um, does have some kind of ads as well. Um, Nova historically is what the way I like to name it is um, Doom-like on newer platforms is the way they've really been trying to emphasize the, a lot of the story in the most recent games and the cinematics, if you will. And I can tell you right now, this is the kind of game where the cinematics should also be enjoyable to you because they really are pretty sharp. As far as I can tell, um, the combat in the game is very fast paced is what I'm going to say. Uh, just having a very small screen and a touch screen, this might be really hard to do. The bigger the device, in my opinion, the easier the action is to uh, keep up with and aim and, uh, you know, shoot, shoot, bang, bang. So what's the control surface like? I assume it's two circles that you put your thumbs in. Yeah. Uh, and it, and, and I'm 99% sure this was one of the Novas that had gamepad support on my uh, GPD. So it just, you know, worked with, with my dual sticks and, and the, and the LR buttons on top. Um, I'll say this, this was definitely fast paced action. And this was the game. I do believe that had a multiplayer, uh, uh, built in that I never really tried because most of the time when I try this thing, I'm out and about, I'm not in my house yet. Yeah, it does have multiplayer arena with yeah. six player death matches. So yeah, if you know deathmatch is your thing, welcome to Nova Legacy. Hopefully, you'll still talk to your friends and family, you know, sometime. So if you hate your battery, um, and you have an unlimited data plan, this is for you. Oh yeah, this will definitely suck the battery, no doubt. And it's game loft, so 
it's the kind of thing that you shouldn't have issues with. You shouldn't have freezes with. It shouldn't cause your phone to hang. It shouldn't cause your phone to reboot. Game Loft has been around a while doing this. Yeah. Um, okay, what I'm going to bring next is a, I'm pulling this one back out of the attic. Um, I will say on the Mattermost server, uh, where if you want to be a part of it, just shoot me an email with uh, whatever email you want to be registered. I can send you an invite so you can be in a closed um, a social group is what I want to say, uh, where it's like a beauty, beautified IRC text chat. Uh, but it's also closed private off. Google can't index it. Nobody can see what we're chatting about. We just have our private chats and just have fun. You and, just, you, you know, once in a while watch list when you said that, Oh, that that's okay. They can watch me and, and I'll moon them from a moving car. Um, uh, you know, and, and we once in a while laugh at people. Cause you know, that's what all geeks do. I think when they get in, in herds, um, that there's another type of place where we can also hang out. And that is mumble mumble. We used to be a first person shooter game, audio conferencing tool to where you would have, you know, 16 on 16 people playing. Each person would have their own audio server. Each team would be in their own server and they would like coordinate audio wise you know i'm over here frank go over there bob come save me kind of talking back and forth mumble has grown and so as team speak its sister application as far as i looked they're both in direct competition they both serve a very similar scheme mumble is completely open you can start on anything and the android client i'm going to tell you right now called plumble dash mumble voip is surprisingly rock solid uh i'll say that surprisingly rock solid you can easily do push to talk button or voice activated so it you know um how the mic turns on can be controlled by you um technically speaking podnuts has a mumble server literally i want to say it's 20 cents a month it's something so cheap it's not even worth mentioning how cheap it is it's so cheap uh, this app is a dollar twelve to buy. I will say that. Even if you only use it a couple of times, well worth the money. Well worth the money. Um, this is a really, in my opinion, fun way to chat and hang out. Yeah, I seriously considered using Mumble for the podcast back in, you know, back in the day. Um right. before Skype and and Google Hangouts really stepped up their game. Yeah, I still like it because for that purpose on some um uh, podcasting things because it's a more centralized server so no one's audio will be better than anyone else no one's lag should be extremely better than anyone else's uh, in theory and you can easily do multi-track re um re um re recording so if me mark are recording a show and i hit record i get two separate files here's the real plus if eric then joins 50 minutes into an hour long podcast. When I load up Eric's file, he'll have 50 minutes of complete silence in the very beginning of his file. And it will auto magically line up perfectly with our audio. I don't know any app that does that. No. So uh, there are places where I actually prefer to use mumble. Unfortunately, video helps us communicate better. Right. So, you know, that's what we use. Brett Gurton doesn't like the app and he says this application by default changed my volume from mute to an exceptionally loud volume and broadcasted some very misunderstandable conversation this is not acceptable behavior for a vorp client to do by default mumble is about privacy and security and not only that i feel that changing my volume was a violation of my wishes as the user i had not changed any settings in your application this happened automatically Please change this behavior. I don't know if this is a bug or what, but I am no longer a happy user of your application. How can I trust? And they cut him off. <laughs> I think I'd cut him off too. Um, I will say it was a it was a dollar twelve. Uh, SCJ in the chat point out there's a free version. I will make sure the free version is linked to in the chat. Uh, I will say if you like the app get the paid version. It looks like there is no difference. Literally the paid version is just how you donate, which I will say is the perfect model in my opinion to do applications. Yeah. It simply says, if you like the app, please purchase the donate version. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, yeah, good, 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 good stuff. Um, what I have lastly, finally, I'm a little upset because I do not believe the video worked in the store, at least I tried to be, be uh, for the show. And the reason I'm upset is I usually don't like videos. The video shows off just how gorgeous this game is. The mechanics of it and the how the game works isn't rocket science. It's almost like the old school slider puzzle where you would have, you know, a grid of like four by four or four by five. You would slide it around to make the uh, puzzle complete. This is that same basic type of mechanic, just a little bit differently. Yeah, the video still is not working for me. Um, they Basically, you start out in a easy four grid, two by two. There's nothing more easier than a two by two grid. And you are in one of the cubes and the exit is in another one of the cubes. And there's one way out of your cube and one way into the other cube. And you can flip and switch and exchange the cubes around to get your two doorways to line up. So then you can go to the exit. As the stages go on, the uh, complexity basically increases to, in my opinion, at a perfect rate almost too slow but not quite not too slow rate of getting ever more difficult and unbelievably gorgeous is the only word i can say for this game they really did a extreme attention to detail uh on appearance yeah so it's a simple puzzle style game but with real eye candy and and i like that yeah just good stuff um warp shift by deep silver puzzle game top developer e for everyone does have ads and it and in and in app purchases i do believe the in-app purchase does remove the ads uh 371 reviews 4.4 average reviews current version 1.0.6 updated april 4th 2017 between 10 and 50 thousand installs um this was just simple fun i'll say that simple I don't say brainless fun, but simple fun you can do when you're like at an eye doctor's appointment waiting to be seen by a guy who tells you he doesn't think diabetes is caused by sugar. And then I'm really, really happy. He's my optometrist and not my nutritionist. It says explore five unique worlds with 15 levels each. So my, my third grade math tells me that's 75 levels. Um, and if it takes you 10 minutes, uh, well, let's call it two minutes to solve each of those. You've got almost three hours of, of gameplay there. Um, seems like a win to me. Yeah, I agree. That's good. Although one of the, one of the first reviews is enough to make me not even download it. I was excited about downloading it until I saw this review that says invasive full screen, 15 second video ads uninstalled without hesitation. That's just not okay. Maybe I got lucky. I don't remember seeing that. Yeah, especially if it's the the kind where the volume is cranked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Too shade. Um, yeah, and then uh, here's another one. April 7th, so 2017, brand new. Game would have been awesome if not for the compulsory ads every three minutes. See, and is there an option to purchase it? If you can buy your way out of the ads, I'm okay with that. Well, there is in-app purchases. I do believe it removed the ads. I do believe it said that. I, I, uh, I've mentioned it, I'm pretty sure, before. My, my favorite chess game um, has this insidious way of popping up apps, uh, 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 ads, rather, where there's, a, there's a, a couple of buttons at the bottom of the screen that you have to push or that you, you very commonly push, uh, the replay or the 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 next move I, I forget exactly which ones they are it's different on each screen but the developer has timed it either in the code or maybe it's adaptive but he almost always knows just when i'm about to push that button and he slides up an overlay ad to it so i end up clicking an amazon link or something instead of that button and i i want to be mad about it but it's so brilliant and so insidious that i almost want to reward him for that genius level of work because he always manages to catch me just right. And, uh, I have, I have some, you know, begrudging, uh, respect for that. And I did have somebody, uh, download, uh, BB 10, the ball bouncing number game, uh, this past week. And they immediately started, 
uh, cursing me in, uh, in a private chat a lot because they said that game did the same kind of thing to him where it knew how to manipulate him is the way I look at it. And it, and it, it did in the, he said a very subtle fashion at first, but he swore as time went on, it got more, um, um, like boisterous about how it was able to just control and manipulate his time. And he said, I had my button hovering over the uninstall button and I had a notification from the app. And you know, saying, yeah, you, you could try to play us some more. And he, and he, and he, and he, and he <laughs> All right. I believe you said that was your last app. Sure. All right. Uh, so let me read through them. We have uh, the, uh, excuse me, wiki game, not the wiki game uh, by Yoav Franco. Uh, Multiling O, not Multilingo, Multiling O keyboard plus emoji by Hanso. Uh, DDWRT Companion Tasker Plugin by Armel Soro. Um, and I've put Tasker in there by Crafty Apps EU. Nova Legacy uh, by Gameloft. Plumble, Mumble Voip uh, f- uh, by Andrew Komenos. And Warp Shift by Deep Silver. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven apps. Um, I think that's a solid day's work for uh, a guy who's uh, down a host. Oh yeah. So this is the part of the show where I employ you to feed back to us. We're, we're all out of emails and all out of tweets and, and the Facebooks and the Twitters doors, not even on Facebook. Do you know what a Facebook is door? Are you familiar? Uh, with that's that? where there's a lot of grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so go to uh, uh, podnuts.com uh, or send an email to AAA at podnuts.com. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, send us your app. Send us your questions. Uh, send us your uh, um, multi-page uh, manifestos. No, don't do that last part. Uh, but we encourage you to let us know what you think. And also, uh, we encourage you to let us know what you think by throwing money at us. Uh, the two best ways to do that are by uh, patreon.com uh, slash Android App Addicts. And uh, well, I guess that's really the best way now. Uh, you have a tip jar on the site, don't you? Oh, we have donate buttons. Um, long story short, if you go to podnuts.com slash Amazon, now you get redirected to a new podcast series of mine. It's a solo show. You get forwarded to episode one, uh, DDG episode one, where I explain why Podnuts does not have an Amazon affiliate link anymore and why we're not going to have an Amazon affiliate a link moving forward for the foreseeable future. Uh, not by choice, not by our choice, at least somebody else made the choice to falsely report us, uh, saying we provided people with incentives and coupons for using our, uh, affiliate link, which is in just outright lie. Um, which means Podnuts lost unforeseeable amount of future income into very high numbers, I'll say. Uh, so if you want to support us, you can either just go to podcast.com, click on the donate button. I'm only asking people to assist us by giving us a $1 a month donation. Uh, it really is nothing more than just voting, saying that you care, that you want this network to keep moving forward, to keep growing, keep getting better, not becoming stale, not becoming stagnant, and not relying on random advertisers to support us, but instead have us support us. Uh, or you can go join us over at Patreon. Uh, like uh, Caleb Fultz and Ian did. I think it was Ian. I-A-I-N. Ian. Maybe, I think. Um, I want to thank everyone for downloading. Thank everyone for supporting. Mark, seriously, I was really happy to hear from you last week. I said it on the show because I didn't hear from you for like a week and Eric told me about the bridge collapsing and everything. And I, and I just had things going around in my head and I was worried. It's, it's truly the end of days here in, in Atlanta. We've had three major roadways collapse or, or blow up in the last couple of weeks. It's, it's insane. There was a gas line that broke, blew up a chunk of highway. And according to eyewitness reports, a motorcycler was either on it or approaching too fast to stop at the time it happened and it launched him like 90 feet into the air Ooh. Uh, when the gas line blew up. Uh, crazy stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm still here, still alive and kicking. Um, and I, I'm going to be opportunistic, opportunistic your door. Uh, I apologize for being 
uh, a buzzard, but I'm going to do it. If you're just looking for a place to replace that uh, podnuts.com slash Amazon link, uh, I would recommend elementopi.com slash Amazon. Oh, um, and I and I heavily suggest do not blame Amazon for this, people. Amazon wants to fight fraud and more power to them. They should fight fraud. Nothing they did was wrong. They were just protecting their own. And yes, use other people's Amazon affiliate links. Never let that affiliate fee go unclaimed. Absolutely. And because it's no different to you, the, the purchaser at all. And you guys know that you've been using this link for, for years. Uh, you don't pay anymore. You don't see anything different. It's just a referral fee. And uh, if, like Dor said, if you've been doing it before, um, just change that link to, to your favorite podcast. I mean, I, I would love to get some of that money if, if you're going to send it to me, but if not any, whoever it is, um, you know, your, your, your great grandma's, uh, cat fund, whatever, uh, there's just no reason, uh, to purchase on Amazon without using a referral link. In fact, they have, uh, referral links where you can donate to charities. Um, so take advantage of that for, you know, just for the good of, of humanity. Uh, don't, don't let that, uh, unclaimed money uh be unclaimed oh yeah okay that's it thanks for hanging out with us people i appreciate uh the opportunity to do this show every week uh we do this at 9 p.m roughly eastern time and thursdays are very long days for me in general and every week i'm tired and 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 every week i'm not kidding i i think about sending door an email and saying i just can't do it this week i'm just too tired and then i sit down here and i start doing it and it's one of the best hours i spend uh, every week. So I appreciate you letting me be here. I thank you, the listener, for being here because otherwise this would just be Dora and me having a conversation and we'd be a little more weird than we even are if mm -hmm. we weren't listening to it. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, Dora, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, any final words of wisdom before we say goodnight? Uh, the best thing about diabetes is I can eat a lot of bacon. Mm, bacon. Until mm -hmm. they tell you you're got too high. Uh, 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 uh. No, my doctor already tried that. And then I showed him a paper from the National Institute of Health from January 2016 showing a 20-year study with over 20,000 participants showing the cholesterol that you intake through your mouth hole has nothing to do with the cholesterol in your bloodstream. This is, this is true. Um, I, I've seen those studies too, and, and I live in my own life. I'm a, a paleo slash Atkins, whatever, no-carb type person, and my cholesterol went down. Yeah. As, right, everybody. The, as the Beatles said, it's all in the mind, you know. <laughs> it must be. See you uh, next week because that's it for this episode of the Android App Addicts. Next week. We're not going to be here next week. Well, that's okay. They don't know that. Um, sorry for trolling you there at the end. No, it's yeah. fine. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trolling is the, the, the global pastime of the internet. Yeah. 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 And unfortunately, you know, for a lot of people, it comes nat Oh, natural. This was 465, 465. Bang. Okay. Now files. Unar. Unar. New York city. Connect user. Bing, 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 bing. Close F3, file, export, own cloud, AAA. I don't know if you, I, I don't usually look at the show notes, so I don't know if you do this all the time, but did you know that last week the, the links were in reverse order on the show notes? Unfortunately, it always is. Okay. I, I did not, I still haven't found an easy, simple way to all basically automate, semi-automate the reversing of the two things I can't stand is all of my notes in all of my spreadsheets are typically in reverse order because I insert rows and then I backfill and then I delete the empty rows at the top. I don't know why. I don't know why. That I know is, uh, that is a unique workflow. Ah, uh, it's confusing to even my me me. Hey, no, not good. I used to have a um, Notepad plus plus thing back in the day that did a three way bounce to reverse every to reverse every line. So line one was always the last, and last was always the first. But 
on Linux now, me no have no notepad plus plus. I'm sad. Yeah, it, it's the best tool out there uh, uh, across all platforms. Oh, yeah. To, to do anything, literally anything you can imagine. If you can logically think it out, there's a way you can do it in Notepad++ in a semi-automated fashion. Yeah, it's the, it is literally the only thing that I truly miss. And for a while there, I used to run it in wine. You know, pain in the butt. Oh, did is Darth Vader laying sideways? He did. He fell over. He looks a little drunk. I just uh, saw my own feed there. Kids, Th these toys are not toys, except that they're toys. <laughs> they're action figures. They're daddy's action figures. They're they're set pieces. They're not toys. But yeah, my youngest son told my uh, wife. It's not a dial. It's an amiibo. That's different. <laughs> I'm like, well, we, we all have our excuses, son. Just, just stick with the lie. And I need to come over to here, go to the Ube of two. Dashboard. And I need to point in the middle. First thing I need to do is I need to rename the video accurately. Okay. I messed up here. So this is from 1006 tonight, 465. 1006, right? Right? Right. Right. Uh, upload the button. Select. Do 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 do. Do be do be do. Four sixty five. Like butter. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I forgot. I gotta go. Ahead and and I literally, yeah, I have like five shows I need to publish. I haven't had a chance to publish. Oh man. Okay. Events. Yeah. Edit. I'm going to first come here and edit this. Yes, 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 yes. Man, back when I was doing eight shows a week, I, I was, that was like, I felt like all I did. Yeah, I, I don't want to say it's a job, but, uh, but it's kind of job-like. Because it literally is like, you go through this stack and there's another stack waiting for you. And then there's another stack waiting for you. And then there's another stack waiting, and you know, you know, just. The point yeah. of uh yeah you got to keep it fresh I say thank you kitty and then first I need to do this okay it looks like I just got reader file I like getting a little pop-up notification over here I think I think I mentioned it on the this week's podcast so you probably already know this but they've marked off my neighborhood for for at&t gigafiber Ooh. Uh, yeah 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 and i'm not kidding T to the day um the day they sent their trucks around my comcast speed almost doubled oh, miraculously must be a <laughs> must be hand to jesus himself touching your router or something like, you know, we're, we're sorry. This is the mo max we can do. Oh, crap. Gigafiber's coming in. Uh, let's turn everybody up, Harold. Yeah. We just had a, you know, uh, it was a miracle. Bob over here, you know, trusted employee, figured out how he could change stuff and get more than we've ever expected. So you can get a gig synchronous with AT&T for 80 bucks a month for 12 months. I don't know what it goes up to after 12 months. Uh, I'm, I'm paying 75 now for a uh, hundred down and 20 up. That is so tempting. I'm, oh man. Oh yeah. Yeah. Who else? Somebody else said they got, they just got up bumped up to, to a gig synchronous. Oh, it was a Jeff in Michigan area. I, I want to say, I want to see his was Comcast. I can't remember whose carrier was, but yeah, he, he, he said he has a gig symmetrical. 
I can only say, I hate you. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. Me. I mean, I'm not bad now. Let me see what my speed of me. Uh, I kind of like speed of me, but I believe I got to replace hardware too. Is 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 partially my issue? Because yeah, I'm going up to ninety. Or I'm supposed to get one. Fi- oh. Okay, like ninety eight. I'm I'm supposed to be getting one fifty symmetrical. It, it could be my hardware. Yeah. Um. I. I... I'm a huge fanboy of uh, Google Fiber now, I tell you. Well, yeah. And see, I thought they were slowing it down, I heard. So, hell, if they're not, more power to you, man. That's awesome. Okay. No more off the air. Okay. Uh, come on, man. Click. Click. Uh, come over here. 